Hi everybody and welcome back. You are watching Scan Agile Public Sector Event and my name is Mirette Kangas. Uh, is it really possible to make cross-sector work in government administration? Yes, it is. Believe me. Our next speaker is a real forerunner of developing the ways of working. She has talked about agile culture for years and years. Always ready to help others and share her vision. She's experienced head of development with the uh, demonstrated history of working in the government administration. Please welcome from Ministry of Finance, Virpi Einola Pekkinen. It's a pleasure to be in here. Uh, Hi, Virpi. Good, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Nice to see you, Virpi. Nice to see you. Uh, just a moment. Can you see? No, you can't. Can you see my slides now? Not, no, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Just a moment. Oh yes, here. Hmm. Okay, now it's starting. Now we see your slide with the. Uh, now we see your slide. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a pleasure being here. Uh, I've been working when I was thinking about how long I've been a civil servant. It's it's a, a, actually quite uh, quite horrible to think that I have been a civil servant for 35 years. But uh, working in in different organizations and different ministries, and the last 20 years at the Ministry of Finance, but but always in some kind of uh, developing uh, and changing project so that is that has to be some somewhere very deep in in me uh, i am going to tell you about the cultural change that has been ongoing in the finnish uh, uh, civil servant and government within uh, so to say within the last 10 years of time from my perspective as a developer and a, a developer of an administration this picture has followed me for quite a long time because I think it it pretty well describes the the thing the steps that you have to take uh, if you want the change to be hap uh, happening. Uh, first step is the consciousness. Uh, you have to be aware of what you want to get rid of and uh, what no longer works. Uh, second step is about building the view to the future, uh, which direction you want to change the, to happen. Uh, after that, you have to have a desire to act, because without that, nothing really happens. And then the last phase is, is uh, to internalize that you yourself have a crucial role, role in making the change. You mustn't externalize uh, it to somebody else, but understand that if you want the change to happen, you must be the change yourself. So I'm going to describe you some of the steps that we have taken uh, within uh, approximately uh, 10 years in the Finnish civil servant. Uh, about the steps and, and uh, at the end of the, uh, I will tell you a little bit more about a case that concretizes the change, namely our new collaborative working space, uh, Work 2.0 Lab. First step, uh, I think, very crucial step in in the, my my point of view has been this uh, networking. Uh, this, I think, is actually the most crucial point uh, where everything in our context started. 
the, the feeling when people from different ministries and agencies come together and realize that they are not alone with their thoughts about the needed change is, is very energizing and, and full of power, as, as you probably know if you have, have, have been there. Uh, it, it's, it's almost too difficult to describe because you have to, you have to uh, experience it and you have to feel it. Uh, this huge movement to build networks across uh, organizations has spread all over the government and civil servant within the last 10 years of time. The, the difference uh, to so-called old school or, or traditional working, working groups uh, type of organization is that there are no hierarchies, there are no statuses or power positions. Everybody is on a uh, same level, passionate to work for a common mission. One Exp uh, example of that uh, is a change agents or, or lately change makers network that we formed uh, about 10 years ago, uh, which as its best uh, committed uh, various expert, uh, experts from, from many different ministries and agencies together. Behind this, uh, this networking uh, is a strong commitment to work and doing uh, co uh, a strong commitment to the work we are doing and, and a will to understand it on a larger context. Another driver, of course, is uh, a will to be an actor, not an object, to do the change yourself. At the moment, there is a, a very uh, strong uh, awareness uh, or, or, and consciousness about the fact that our government and, and whole public sector still works too much in silos, separately, and is not able to tackle the wicked, the complex, the systemic and surprising challenges that we face in the society more and more all the time. Uh, in this, I think that we are very much on a desire to act step. There has been very promising uh, development towards uh, understanding this. But at the same time, I must be honest and say that, that we often still are on just a, a talking level. But there is more and more this kind of a state of mind and, and uh, uh, one good, good example that I want to mention is that our uh, unpolitical state secretaries, uh, who are the top civil servants, servants in, in the, the managers, the top managers, civil servant managers in the ministries, uh, they produced uh, together a year ago, I think it was a year ago, uh, a common vision for the future based on a shared understanding of the trends and the mega trends that influence to the work of the ministries as a basis for their work. So it was a very strong uh, uh, approach to, towards this uh, unsiloed uh, government. Uh, from Bridges, uh, there is a short way to so-called phenomen-based approach and mindset. This means that we, instead, instead of tasks that are separated from each other, approach things and as phenomens and begin to examine their connections more deeply. A sort of systemic uh, approach and mindset that I, so I thought that Oliver Kahinen was also talking about the systemic uh, approach. The more complex the phenomenon is, the more it needs an approach from many different directions and combination of different kind of uh, competencies and experiences. 
uh, one quite inter interesting recent example of this uh, phenomenon based working is that our present government prepared its program, the government strategy in so called phenomenon tables, where they approach the needed actions uh, in, in larger, uh, uh, larger entities. Uh, that cannot be tackled by one ministry alone. But uh, they, they, a, a combination of many different ministries and other actors is needed. Uh, one step on our journey uh, has been to move towards ecosystems type of working. Uh, it has recently increased a lot. We have understood that uh, things do not proceed only with networking and, and most of all, not only networking between civil servants, but we need ecosystems where there are actors from all over the society. A good example of this kind of approach is a so-called Aurora AI program in which uh, different actors of the society and civil servants from different ministries uh, are trying to find human-centric solutions to identified problems using artificial intelligence. From five years planning to experimenting, one extremely important turning point uh, in our journey, on our journey has been uh, that, uh, and and one important point that gave a huge leap in a progress of change uh, was one sentence written on our previous government's program, and that sentence said that an experimental culture is going to be introduced widely and deeply within the society and especially within the public sector. It's, it's funny how huge influence this pretty small sentence had to, to within the civil servants that, who, who were, all of us who were just uh, being doing this kind of small exper experiments uh, before, but now it was finally officially licensed to experiment. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was now also highly supported from the the highest level of of government. So it was very very uh, important for the cultural change. The understanding that our environment is changing so rapidly and unexpectedly, and uh, that we cannot we can't control it anymore with our five years or four years whatever planning. Uh, that started to spread into daily discussions and also actions. Uh, in administrational units, we, we moved from piloting to experimenting and, and learning from our mistakes. And especially this, that we are learning from our mistakes as a civil servants, uh, that, that is a, a big change, uh, a cultural change. Uh, from the mindset of being always right and never making any mistakes. So now moving to the to the case, what I I, I told you at the beginning. Uh, from my po point of view, work work point of view, uh, this all has led uh, to a growing perception that uh, if we want the, to proceed smoothly into this direction, we also need structures that support this kind of cultural change. Uh, so it, it, it is not going to happen by itself. Uh, most of all, we need a leadership that leads civil servants more and more to of the citizen 
and other customers of the society. Uh, we have come to the conclusion that we also need collaborative working spaces where people from different parts of administration and government can come together and work together. This has been uh, for a long time in our minds and, and some small steps have been taken earlier. But finally, last year, uh, the time had come for a bigger step and we were ready to begin to form in uh, the work 2.0 lab. So we, we started this uh, two years experiment uh, last December and, uh, and it, it will end at the end of next year. Perhaps we can get a little short uh, continuation because of the, the corona COVID situation, but we'll see. And this experiment is, is based on a cooperation between uh, four major uh, parties, uh, meaning Ministry of Finance, Senate Properties, State Treasury and, and Government ICT Centre Walter. We have been networking since 2015 under the, the, the uh, our goal has been this work 2.0 where it is uh, licensed to work smarter and we approach this uh, smarter working from four different perspectives, which are physical, virtual, social, and mental. Uh, this, these previously mentioned uh, four partners uh, finance this, this experiment, plus we have some partnership open to, to, to all government organizations, and, and these mentioned here. Prime Minister's Office, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment, Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, Ministry of Education, ITLA Children's Foundation, City of Helsinki, Sustainable City Programme, and Evangelical uh, Lutheran Church of Finland. These all together with us for uh, finance this, this experiment. And the costs are mainly the rent, because the location I am sitting here at the moment, it, this is uh, 130 square meters, I think. And it's located uh, in a very core center of Helsinki, very near uh, all of the ministries. So, so the location is, is also very extremely important for its, its succeed, but, but understandably it, it, it's not the, the most cheap uh, cheap uh, space. Also, uh, the main actor and the contracting party here is, is Senate Properties, which is managing all the state-owned uh, properties in Finland. We do not have any full-time workers, as for example in Mind Lab in Denmark. We have a core 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 team from Ministry of Finance, Senate Properties, State Treasury and Government, ICT Center, Valtteri, and we are working uh, as, as in, in, in addition or as part of our work here, trying to connect our daily work as much as possible to this lab, to building up and developing this, this lab concept. And I want to stress also that because this is an experiment, it, it's not ready. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not uh, ready in that sense. In in the beginning, that 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 it would be uh, not changing. So we are asking all the the public sector workers and organizations to come to to build up and to to. Uh, develop this concept to be as as good as possible. Uh, so the lab is a new environment for collaboration and learning. This learning uh, 
attitude and mindset is, is extremely important in, in this whole lab concept. Uh, we have a lab's website uh, and it says, uh, this is in Finnish, it's written, uh, it, it means uh, towards a dream of a joint work. And this actually tells all about it, uh, that, at, that at the moment we are working hard to accelerate the development towards a mindset and feeling that our work is, is common and we do it for the benefit of, of our common customers. Uh, whatever our job as a civil servant is or wherever it is located in the structures of, of administration. So not just working together, but, but have a, a, a common, a joint work. It's a, there is a slight but very important uh, different difference in, in this mindset. Uh, and this work 2.0 lab is, is uh, con one concrete example of, of this new collaborative mindset. So on, on our website, you can find information, basic information, what, what is uh, lab 2.0, uh, work 2.0 lab, uh, how to get there. Uh, we have some hosts and facilitators to, to help working here. You can uh, schedule, you can, uh, uh, you find the, all the spaces here and you can make the, the reservations through the web page. We also have, uh, you can see here in the, in the left corner, uh, we, all, we also have a, a uh, one Finnish startup who has uh, built an, an application for us. Uh, it's, it's a Work 2.0 lab uh, application, and and uh, uh, with that application, you can, for example, there is a lock opener, so you can enter to the to, to the uh, space, and you can also make some reservations to these spaces, etc. So it is very, very modern in that, that sense also. Uh, uh, um, so the, the, the lab is open to everybody who is working at this, as a civil servant uh, or at the government uh, sector. And in addition, of course, open to all of our financing partners. Uh, what does this uh, two point uh, lab two point uh, work two point old lab experiment aims to? Uh, it aims uh, aims to promote the emergence of of improved and better quality ideas, solutions, and decisions on 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 issues under preparation and and uh, issues that are requiring uh, cross administrative competencies and and as outlined very strongly in, in the new government program also. Uh, we also aim to create a new kind of structures uh, require, required for this, this joint work, uh, environments, platforms, premises, networking, uh, and learning through this uh, experiment together. Uh, Lab is also about to increase the competence, skills, and innovation capacity of public officials, and and uh, because we invite also other other actors of the society and from from private sector etc. to to work with us here. So the aim is is to promote collaborative networks and collaborative learning for for all of the uh, civil servants and and other. Uh, actors in the society also. Uh, we have formulated this kind of guiding principles that, that also uh, describe pretty well, I think, uh, the culture that we want to, to build here and, and emphasize here to, to leave all the 
prejudices and uh, behind the doors and and come here to to uh, be surprised surprise others and be surprised to explore try learn fix uh, to invite others uh, to cross borders be curious and prototype and implement quick So this lab uh, concretizes and brings to, together all the things I've been talking here, uh, working across the silos in networks and ecosystems, uh, phenomenon based in larger systems, exploring, experimenting and learning together. Uh, lab is not only a physical uh, space, though that is the most concrete uh, part of it and and it's easy to think it only as as a physical space but we we want to stress this that that uh, we we want to uh, look and develop it from all of these uh, four perspectives uh, that there is uh, also this virtual social and mental uh, perspective those are very important uh, because we we want to believe and 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 we believe that that the lab provides a platform also for this systemic change it doesn't necessarily make the system say change at least not at loan of course but but offers it offers an opportunity to make it easier and more, more agile this is how it looks outside it's it's uh, located in a very very core center of of Helsinki near the metro station near near the railway station etc. And here are some pictures uh, of inside some some of the happenings. So there there is a larger space and then there are smaller uh, spaces and also you can have just a, a working space only for yourself in, in a in a larger room though there are two ways to use the space uh, they are flexible workstations and then there is this larger room this labra which is suitable for different different kind of uh, workshops and and uh, so it's it's very uh, how do you say easy to to uh, move the chairs and tables and uh, bring together uh, all kinds of uh, different different sort of group of people. Uh, well, what happened then? Unfortunately, we had a we had a very uh, good start, a three months start for the lab, but unfortunately we had to close the physical lab lock it down as so many other things in the world in March this spring. So it only had time to be open from the opening seminar uh, ceremony from December the 12th to, to March of the 13th until we reopened it on the 3rd of August. Uh, however, this spring, this, despite of all its negative impacts, uh, has given us a huge push towards agility and resilience. And uh, while we are moving from old normal to new normal, we have learned a lot. And many of the things that we have been trying to develop for ages are, are now starting to be mainstream. It's, it's almost unbelievable how, how soon it has happened. So if we, uh, yesterday we were mostly working mostly at office and, and had some remote working days. Today we mostly work remote and, and, uh, so, and sometimes at office. Uh, so this uh, moving from uh, old normal to new, new normal, uh, I think, it is going to be some kind of a 
hybrid model, uh, this, this new, new normal way of working. At the moment, because the uh, physical lab is, is uh, under uh, some restrictions of, of the participants, how, how many people can be here at the, at the same times and, and in other, uh, uh, other uh, uh, well, <laughs> what was I going to say? Uh, it is so that we are now going to, to very strongly uh, towards virtual digital working uh, and uh, trying to find out modern solutions to, to this uh, virtual collaborative working and learning. And this is the thing that we are working at the moment. Uh, we want to provide a plat platform, uh, a virtual platform where this um, virtual collaborative working would be as as uh, normal as as a physical uh, as a physical uh, working. So we are trying to to figure out what would it be as its best. Uh, we are exploring opportunities to find the best possible solutions uh, using perhaps 3D or VR technologies so that this virtual collaborative working would get the best possible experience for us. Work is changing on a high speed then, and we, we really need to uh, think that uh, this new normal is going to be a, a, some kind of a hybrid model, as I said. So, so it is on our agenda at the moment and, and I think in the future to, to try to find this best possible hybrid model to work with. But I think it, it, it is almost, as I said, it's, it's, it's quite amazing what, what has happened during just a couple of months in, in our attitudes and in our ways of working and, and in a way this, this horrible COVID has, has uh, been, been supporting and pushing us, us towards this new, new working and learning. So this was what I was wanted to what I wanted to share with you today, and now I'm I'm uh, uh, willing to answer some questions if you have them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Virpi. We have already uh, some questions ready, and uh, if you from the audience side, if you want to ask questions from Virpi, please. Put the question to the chat room. Let's see how many we can we can get in in time. Well, yeah. I, I would like to start. Uh, you you mentioned quite many times this uh, importance of learning together. This uh, cross uh, cross uh, uh, functional and and within different industries, etc. And uh, what kind of outcomes would you like to see in, let's say, three years, in, in big picture? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how would I answer? Uh, I would see, uh, I would like to see uh, uh, better solutions for, for, for citizens and, and companies' problems. And, and better ideas uh, for the complex systemic uh, challenges in, in our society, because I deeply believe that that they cannot be tackled only by one ministry or, or administrative branch. We need this. It is it yeah. is absolutely necessary to to collaborate to find those those solutions. I also hope that we have this, that that we proceed in in that uh, working uh, working for the benefit of of common uh, customers and and because that is the core 
to understand that uh, that we have to share our experience and and uh, our our competencies and not to keep them to ourselves we are all yeah. working on on taxpayers money so we have to give something <laughs> good for them yeah mm. okay uh, there is a question from audience that uh how would you describe the biggest differences between pilots and experiments? Oh, yes. You mentioned the, those both uh, during yes. your keynote. Yes, yes, that is a very good question. And, and I, I think it was a very important moment for us when we realized what the difference is. Uh, because uh, beforehand, uh, or, or in, in, in the previous years, we, we, are, we are always piloting something, but as I've understood, the difference is that that in a pilot you already has have something that you want to share and and deliver and uh, a scale. You have some some model uh, that you have uh, formulated somehow, and then you just share it. To mm -hmm. you start from somewhere, and then you share it to other organizations. But but when you start to experiencing doing experiments you don't have anything uh, in the beginning you just start to uh, try to test and uh, in in that way proceed in in getting the model that that you could then perhaps de deliver elsewhere also yeah actually i i have seen when 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 uh working a little bit with you and your colleagues that you are really doing experiments at, at your office, oh, yes. it's, oh, it's yes. wonderful. It's wonderful. Oh yes. Ah, let's have a next uh, question. Uh, for example, here uh, there are a lot of questions coming. So, uh, what are the elements of normal working you want to see in the future? Mm hmm. Oh, elements. Well. on a personal level or on an individual level i i think that uh, uh, it is important that you can choose yourself we have had this uh, license to work smarter in in this work 2.0 uh, target from the beginning and and one of the core 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 uh, things has been that that we each and every of us know the best way where to work and 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 with whom to work and uh, so this i think that, that this kind of multiple way of uh, doing things that there are not just one or two ways there are several ways uh, to work smarter and and smartly uh, depending concerning on what what you are doing what what is your aim for the day or for the moment and so not just one way but but many ways of of doing it it it's uh, smartly i would say perhaps yeah. okay uh i will pick up one one question uh I'm also interested to hear what you are saying. What have been your steps to change the decision-making processes and culture in ministry for having more favorable cross-functional environments and budget to run innovations and experiments? Oh, that's a difficult question. I'm not sure if I can remember everything how 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 have we changed the the decision uh, making was it so mm. yeah mm -hmm. well um i don't know if the decision making the the last point of of making a decision has has not perhaps changed a lot there's all, always some process in in making the the final decision but but i think that the process towards the decision has changed so that we are more and more uh, gathering people together and listening different uh, points of views and uh, picking up ideas from from many different uh, uh, experiment uh, 
experiences so and 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 uh, competency so i i think that that it, it is good that the process has changed process towards the decision of course it's not a uh uh collective uh, process the the final uh, decision making but but i think it's it's the process is is better at the moment of course budgeting uh, and and budget is is mm. challenging us the structure of budget is challenging us in this uh, phenomenon thinking but but there are some uh, experiments also at, exploring the the possibility to to build and um, so so called a phenomenon based budgeting yeah. but we we shall see what what comes out of that so it sounds like we see the light somehow <laughs> oh yes absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely. okay time is running out Birpi. uh thank you so much thank uh, you it has been great to having you here thank you thank you very much